Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ESRF and we'll finish off having a look at the GFS ensembles and the UK Met Office run as well. Now in yesterday's video we were looking at the potential for it to be a very westerly dominated middle of the month. Now very interestingly typically as soon as we start to see that firm up within the ensembles and within the models today typically the operational 12Zs have gone cold um, for the last sort of third of November in about 10 days plus time. Now it is in the long time frame and when we see the ensembles at the end of the video you can see it is in a minority option but very interesting seeing the flip we've seen over the last 24 hours in the uh, operational runs with them showing something potentially quite cold um, towards day 10 and beyond so have a look at that in a minute so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the link's in the description so you can see in the latest GFS at the moment we have toppled that low uh, that high pressure that had given us the northerly wind and we are under higher pressure there is some rain further north as in a few showers to around generally many areas are dry However, as we head into this weekend, low pressure is going to push in from the northwest. It's going to bring a lot of heavy rain across northern areas, but we still have a ridge of high pressure to the south, which is going to sort of peter out those uh, weather fronts and keep things a little bit drier. We do see a brief northerly wind, so we could see a few wintry showers further northwards for a time. For a ridge of high pressure built in, and we see the westerly dominated conditions move in. It does look like generally in the south it will be pretty dry as we do have a bit of a euro high building which is going to mean the southern half of the uk is going to be just a little bit drier and then a little bit warmer as well as you can see the winds are veering in from the south to southwesterly directions if we have a look at the upper air temperatures you can see it's reasonably warm in the south but still quite cold in the north however um if we do move beyond that you can see if we do go back to the pressure charts um, it does feel like the West Central is running a little bit slow today. But beyond that, you can see we build up quite a big high pressure system that starts bringing in southeasterly winds. Nothing majorly warm, but nothing particularly cold either. And if we do have a look at the air mass as well, you can see potentially actually is a little bit warm in the far southeast. Um, this time of year, we can get cold southeasties and we can get warm southeasties. As you can see there is some cold air across the eastern Europe, but it's not quite sufficient really to be reaching the UK. Beyond that, something really interesting does happen if we go back to the pressure charts. Now, this is day 10, um, quite uh, well, towards sort of the reliable, end of the reliable time frame. We're seeing this within the ensembles, this high pressure trying to come out, out, out of the North Atlantic. Now, watch what happens to this high pressure. We start to see low pressure trying to plunge into Scandinavian Europe. And this high pressure goes, the only place it can go with this low pressure hitting into Eastern Scandinavia, it goes straight up towards Greenland and the UK goes into a brutally cold northerly wind. The tropospheric polar vortex arrives in the UK for the last 10 days of November with brutally cold air mass, minus 10 ice firm moving through, which is brutally cold for the middle to end of November. Minus 10 ice firm would give us snow um, widely, uh, even to low levels. Um, and yeah, Normally we don't see the minus 10 outside of maybe January, February time and the odd occasion we see it in sort of March, April and we do get some an, another northerly blast. But of course that time of year the sun's a bit stronger so we tend not to get sustained cold spells. But if we saw this at the end of November, very minute, reminiscent of the December to remember in 2010. But it is a minority option and it is right at the end of the ensemble, uh, of the operational run so it is quite unreliable. Um, and as we head right towards the end of the run, right out to 384 hours, you can see that we do still have quite a cold air mass over the top of the UK, but it is starting to diminish a little bit. But we still have that blocking further northwards. So if we do have a look at the pressure charts, once again, you can see the potential for another northerly blast to come back in with some even colder air once again. So very interesting seeing that from the GFS. That would be setting up some widespread snow and brutally cold conditions the last half of november but again it is a minority option it is quite unreliable at this time frame it's really interesting seeing that coming after a, an extremely westerly dominated run yesterday wow just shows you how things can change very quickly this time of year if we do have a look at the gm see how that does compare now i can i do, do i can say that it does go cold at day 10 this gm run so we do run through it you can see again 
low pressure moving through, brief northerly wind um, towards Sunday, Monday, nothing too major. And then we see a lot of westerly winds dominate with a lot of low pressure. And then right towards day 10, we see a very interesting pattern. Now, we don't go directly cold at this stage, but we see the ridge that heads up towards Greenland. The tropospheric polar vortex is coming out of the North Pole out into Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. And if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can actually see the UK is actually really quite warm. However, look at that temperature contrast. This will be a typical pattern where you see a brutally strong cold front move through as this very cold air comes out of the Arctic. This cold air will shunt out this high pressure southwards um, and likely will be turning the UK very cold if we ran this on another couple of days. So very interesting to see the GM follow in line with the GFS at day 10. Again, it's not guaranteed. It's just very, it's just typical today that all the operational runs go cold um, when yesterday they were all going very, very mild. Again, as I said, it just shows you how these things can swing. So if you are looking at the models in one day and it goes very mild, there is the possibility of it swinging very, very quickly because of course, this time of year especially, there are very, very big um, differences in air masses um, over very short distances. So things can turn very warm to very cold or very, from very cold to very warm in a very, very short time frame. So when sometimes I see some people comment saying westerly winds are coming back, you can't say uh, all hope is lost at any real time um, throughout the next few months. Because as we've seen across these last two videos, um, things can change very, very quickly. Now, if we have a look at the Eastern UF and we have a look at day 10, you can see at the moment, very similar to the other two models, of course, with westerly winds moving in over the next few days. And then as we head out to day 10, again, high pressure building up towards Greenland, and we are starting to see northerly winds move in. A brutally cold air mass is waiting in the wings, ready to plunge towards the UK. Um, and you can see still quite warm across the south, but that cold air is coming. Uh, and you see the ridge of high pressure up towards Greenland means it's going to be sustained. If you have a look at the entry of the temperature deviation, you can see brutally cold air. Uh, very interesting to actually see what we would be seeing on that GFS run if we have a look at the entry of the temperature deviation. If we run it back a little bit, you can see really quite brutal air mass. Good 10 or 12 degrees below average A and HPA. Very, very cold. Again, unreliable, of course, but very, very interesting seeing this come up. So if you do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see that sort of pattern well reflected. Over the next week or so, a lot of westerly winds dominating temperatures generally be above average, but could trend below average at times we do see colder air move in. You can see around 13th, 15th of November, that's when we see the uncertainty start to build, and we start to see some much colder runs come off. But similarly, we still have a lot going relatively mild and, or staying a, mild as well. In the longer term, temperature does trend lower to around freezing 850 HPA, but you can see it really is uncertain. We've got some ensembles going down to minus 10 850 HPA, which includes ones like the GFS operational run, but we've got others that are staying around 10 HPA, 10, uh, 10 degrees 850 HPA, which is really quite mild. So it, all hope is not lost in seeing anything cold over the next few weeks or the next month or so, even though at the moment it looks like a westy pattern will dominate in the short time frame, as we've seen by these operational runs. There's always the possibility in the longer term we have had a consistent pattern of amplification of the jet stream, so it wouldn't be too unusual to see a quite brutal northerly wind sort of pop up in the mid, mid to long term time frame and actually come off. So, yeah, we just got to really keep an eye on what happens with these operational runs. Typically, tomorrow, we'll see operational runs go very mild, and we'll see the ensembles dip to colder again, um, and that would just be a typical, uh, the tip a typical thing for the computer models to be doing. If we have a look at Glasgow, see how that does compare. Uh, just look like West Central is really is running slowly today. Looks like West Central is now responding, so we can have a look at... The ensembles for Glasgow, you can see very up and down at the moment, more of a zonal sine wave than in the south, simply because we do have colder air masses coming through at times. You can see typically warm one day, colder the next day, warm again, cold again, sort of flip-flopping, um, and we could be seeing a little bit of snow at times, especially over the mountains, uh, potentially through Sunday into Monday. A lot of precipitation around over the next week, coming in waves though, of course, with weather fronts. There will be dry periods at times, but again, there will be a few showers. But it's looking very mild throughout 11th to around 15th of November, with generally west to southwesterly winds, and it's pretty dry in the south, in the northwards, a few showers around, and then potentially Rally the 11th to 12th, there's signs we could be seeing weather fronts moving through. Beyond that, still a lot of precipitation around. 
the temperatures trend around average so in the north it's a little bit cold and you can see the GFS operation run with a few other outlier runs as well going very very cold for the last third of november and again we just have to really keep an eye where what happens with these uh with these outlier runs whether they do increase um in sort of frequency over the next few days whether we do see more of them come out and whether it does start start to push into the models because these really have only cropped up in today's model runs we weren't really seeing any major signs of this yesterday so yeah very interesting seeing good three four five ensemble runs and of course the gm showing signs and the eastern gf showing signs as well of this big greenland high defense potentially developing so we do finally have a look at the gfs uh, sorry the uk met office run have a look at the next five days it's not particularly eventful but we can see there is some rain moving through tonight so if you are letting off fireworks tonight for bonfire nights scotland may be uh, a bit of rain around especially for the north and the westwards for the west of england and wales and maybe parts of ireland as well a few showers around it's generally going to be cloudy as well but it's going to be a little bit chilly as well so do make sure you keep wrapped up warm after that, you can see weather fronts moving through for tomorrow morning. Quite heavy rain potentially through Saturday afternoon, but fizzling out as it comes up against the higher pressure in the south. Beyond that, we do see the cloud break as that weather front moves through. So it should be some sunshine around potentially late Saturday afternoon, especially in the north. But of course, sunsets now sort of around half four, five p.m. now, so it, it doesn't look like we'll be seeing much sun in the south. Beyond that, through Sunday, a few showers and maybe some snowy snow or sleet showers across the north of Scotland, and then more cloud builds in before more weather fronts push in through Monday afternoon, through Tuesday, and just a lot of cloud and southwesterly winds and weather fronts as well. Maybe a few snow showers across Scotland as well, as we do have a colder air mass. If we do have a look at max temperatures, you can see this evening. Really around 7, 8, 9 degrees and feel probably a couple of degrees colder than that um, in a few spots. So do make sure you, of course, keep wrapped up warm if you are out um, looking at fireworks. Beyond that, for Saturday afternoon, you can see temperatures maybe 11 or 12 degrees, maybe a degree or two up on today, but nothing majorly warm. Sunday nights, re or Saturday night to Sunday, it's reasonably cold, around 5, 6 degrees, but nothing too major. Sunday afternoon, a little bit... Um, a little bit colder actually does it like especially across the north we do have colder air mass pushing in across the south to 11 or 12 degrees and by monday afternoon we're seeing temperatures potentially rise as much as 14 and 15 degrees island but across england and scotland still 9 or 10 degrees with a chillier air mass in place by tuesday afternoon we can see temperatures across the south maybe 14 15 degrees but further north it's only seven or eight degrees and again it all depends on regional variability so we do have we do have very strong differences in air mass at the moment um, and of course a lot of it does depend on precipitation cloud amounts um so yeah do make sure you keep out an eye out for the uh, short range forecast as well but it does look like um it's going to be pretty chilly at times but at the same time, if we do see some sunshine, it could be reasonably mild. But it is, of course, coming into the middle of November. So it's, yeah, almost impossible, really, to get any sort of days where it's reasonably warm. Uh, mild now is sort of low teens, really. Um, as soon as we hit December, average temperatures will be down sort of 5, 6, 7, 8 degrees. Um, so, yeah, chilly times are coming. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.